little bit of backstory, guys. So I'm going through level two certification in precision nutrition, and they gave us this assignment to do a kitchen makeover to help someone or help yourself to change your eating habits, to basically organize your primary eating environment, your kitchen, to support your goals, your healthy eating, your health, your fitness goals, instead of making them more difficult. Because guys, believe it or not, but the environment uh, where you are most of the time um, really shapes your eating habits, making certain behaviors more likely to happen, and certain behaviors are less likely to happen. So uh, because of COVID-19, I didn't have many people to change their kitchen environment, to do their kitchen makeover, but I'm gonna walk you through my kitchen and a few principles that I apply to my kitchen no matter where in the world I am. And I travel and I change my kitchens quite often, but this principle stay with me. And I developed them over the course of my life, over the course of many years, learning from my uh, good and not so good experience. And so these rules uh, work for my kitchen, no matter where in the world um, I am, supporting my goals and aspirations. Uh, guys, before we begin exploring my kitchen, some foundational concepts. So in precision nutrition, we are taught this concept of red, yellow, green foods, uh, dividing foods uh, uh, into these colors for ourselves personally, uh, depending on um, how positively or negatively they affect our eating behavior. Uh, and uh, also, usually, this correlates with the healthiness or unhealthiness uh, of those foods. So uh, red foods are the ones that are no-go, uh, you know, avoid as much as possible and probably keep it out of your kitchen as much as possible to help yourself to eat uh, less of them. Uh, these also might be the foods that just make you overeat and don't make you feel good, even though for some other people they might be totally fine. So yellow foods are foods that are okay sometimes in moderation um, and Green foods are the foods, obviously, that are go-go, so eat as, you know, as much as you want. Uh, they are the um, foods that make us feel good and we don't tend to overeat them. And I like to simplify this concept of red, yellow and green foods a little bit further, uh, basically asking myself, what foods support and promote these positive behaviors that help me to reach and maintain my goals? So, and based on that, I keep some foods out of my kitchen and some foods in my kitchen. Let's start with exploring my fridge, guys, and what I always keep in the fridge that totally supports my goals, and I never tend to personally overeat on those things, and even if I do overdo them sometimes, it's not a big deal. It's more nutrition in my body, in my stomach. Fruit, we have kiwis, we have um, plums, we have nectarines, um, we have mango, we have kefirs, yogurt, all of them unsweetened um, because sweetened things make me personally overeat stuff. So everything is unsweetened. I have herbs, fresh herbs, I have vegetables, different kinds of vegetable things to cook with. Um, we have some sweet potatoes here. Um, we have some kimchi, what else do we have? Some lamb, so meats, vegetables, fruit, non-sweet dairy. In my freezer we have mussels, so we have some, I think it's lamb liver, yeah, it's lamb liver, and we have some natto for a key too. So the basic idea behind what to put in my fridge and what to keep out of my fridge is what foods, based on my best knowledge and experience, support my goals, support the behaviors that lead to my goals 
easier without me again thinking too much about it making too many decisions using my willpower so these are the foods that make me feel good make me feel full of energy i perform well i sleep well i feel energized that also uh satiating uh, and keep me full and happy but also uh foods that don't make me overeat um like for example some kinds of nuts and let's talk about nuts i have a whole like nut history oh history of overeating nuts i used to eat a lot of them and yeah nuts are full of healthy fats and fibers and minerals but if you eat like a pound of them uh, first of all it didn't allow me to reach my ideal body composition and then also when you eat a whole pound of nuts next day you i would feel low on energy you know my stomach wouldn't feel good because of all these nuts you know heavy a lot of fats and hard to digest food so anyhow I realized it was a problem, but what I also realized, not all nuts would make me overeat. Like, for example, I realized that I can have as many hazelnuts, walnuts, sunflower seeds, um, even pistachios. I realized I could have as many of those nuts as, as I wanted, and I could totally grab just a handful of them and eat it and be fine with that. But if I have cashews in my house, or pecans, or macadamia nuts, forget about it. I'm just gonna eat the whole damn thing. It's like, if it's a pound of them, I'm gonna eat the whole pound. So, for me, uh, that's why, for me, cashews kind of like red food, because I eat too many of them, end up feeling lousy, and end up looking not as I'd like to look at. I never bring cashews in my house, and if I want to eat cashews, I buy a single serving container, uh, or I buy a whole container, get some of them and give it to someone. Um, so you'll never find cashews in my house, bags of cashews because of that. And also you'll never find any kinds of sweetened things in my house because those things at some point will make you will make me eat a whole bunch of them and be that keto cookies or stevia sweetened chocolate it doesn't matter if the thing is sweetened i'm gonna end up at some point eating the whole thing the thing about chocolate i absolutely love chocolate like any kind of chocolate cacao products i love them but as i already mentioned i would never have a sweetened chocolate sweetened with stevia whatever 100 percent chocolate it never triggers overeating in me like never i break off 30 grams of it one third of a bar i eat it enjoy it and i'm done with it but it doesn't make me overeat it that's why i can freely store several bars in my house without worrying about eating too much if i have stevia sweetened, sugar sweetened, uh, fruit powder sweetened chocolate, at some point I'm gonna overeat it. And that's why in my house uh, you'll never find sweetened chocolate ever. Now you always can find some canned seafood like tuna, like sardines. Here we have chickpeas and these are mixed beans. So you'll always find some canned seafood for emergency situations in my place. Like when I don't have time to cook, I don't want to cook, I'm super hungry, and there is no chance I'm cooking at this time, uh, right? So for this kind of situations, you'll always find some canned protein and usually canned beans that have a lot of minerals, potassium, um, that are satiating, have a lot of fiber. So these foods you'll always find in my house so I can make a more or less balanced meal without doing any cooking or any prep. And why I also love these specific foods, canned seafood and canned beans, because again, I don't overeat them. Like there is only that much tuna and beans I can eat. Uh, like I never had uh, an instance where I would eat so much tuna and beans that it would make me sick. That's why these foods are super safe for me and they're nutritious, satiating, good sources of protein, healthy fats. Um, they are vegan food on minerals, fiber, and so many other good things. 
Uh, so let's recap, guys. Uh, the main principle behind organizing my own kitchen uh, the main principle behind organizing my kitchen is asking myself this question, what foods support my goals, uh, what foods make the desired eating behaviors uh, the easiest to do, and I uh, stock up on these foods every time I go shopping, they're on my list, I buy vegetables, I buy fruit, food uh, spices, herbs to cook delicious meals with, uh, seafood, meats, eggs, um, uh, nuts and seeds that I, except cashews, because I, you know, overeat those, uh, we already learned this. I buy canned seafood, canned beans, um, some, you know, olive oil, uh, some extra dark, 100% dark chocolate that I can enjoy in moderation. So I put uh, these foods everywhere in my house and I keep the rest of the foods that might be totally healthy and good for someone, like bags of cashews, uh, I keep these foods out of the house because they make the desired behaviors, eating nuts in moderation, they make that behavior more difficult and I have to exercise my willpower and negotiating with myself all the time when looking at those nuts in my cupboard, right? So that's why there are no cashews. And that's the main principle you want to uh, adopt in your life too. You want to keep uh, and making it easier to reach, to grab, to eat uh, those foods that uh, support your goals, support your well-being, that make reaching your goals easier. And you want to make the rest of the foods, uh, maybe, you know, food ordering apps on your phone, uh, also not going to places where you tend to to end up buying a lot of like foods that you don't want to be eating at this moment, like your favorite bakeries, your favorite, I don't know, pastry shops, your favorite restaurants, coffee shops. So you want to make the things that you want to eat less more difficult to get. That's the main concept behind kitchen uh, makeover and any design of your environment. You want your environment to support your goals and make you to exercise your willpower much, much less. So make good behavior easy to do, make desired behavior easy to do, make it automatic and undesired behavior, make it as hard as possible. And let me also know if you are practicing some of these methods too already. Uh, share it with other people because you can help someone. So share.